Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Dhapata Kamalam Shri Guru Navaishnavam Shat Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagrajatam Pandvitam Tam We get many how-to questions. How can we become sincere? How can we chant more clearly? How can we become determined? How can we control our mind and senses? Well, one answer to these questions is just do it. The famous saying, just do it. We ask how to be sincere. Well, just why not be sincere? Sincere means to desire to serve Krishna without any personal reward. On how to control the mind and senses, instead of thinking about it, why don't we just do it? If you understand what the value of the human form of life is, then why not take advantage of it fully? We understand what the value of Krishna consciousness is, then why not do whatever is required to be Krishna conscious? Why fool around? Why waste that time? They have a very serious task ahead of us to be Krishna conscious. So take it seriously. Now, that's one approach. That's one approach. That we ourselves should be very serious and determined understanding the value of Krishna consciousness, understanding that we only have very short lives. We can die today or tomorrow, and certainly we're not going to live very long. If uh, 50 years from now, most of us will have probably left these bodies. In 100 years from now, none of us will be here, not in, not in these forms. It's really not that very much time. <coughs> so we ourselves should be very determined. But another factor is that we are weak. Even after hearing the proper philosophy of life and at least theoretically understanding it, we're not fixed in our determination. We are very weak. Maya is very strong. So Krishna says in Gita, Devi Hesha Hat Gunamahi, Mamaya Hatturantaya, Mameva Yeva Kadyamte, Mayam Hitam Tarantite. Krishna says that this Maya, this illusory energy of man, is very difficult to overcome. But one who surrenders to me, Krishna says, and he's across beyond it. So in this whole seminar we've been discussing the process of surrender. We've discussed some important points. There are many important points we haven't had time to discuss in detail, such as uh, controlling the mind and senses, avoiding fall down, controlling the tongue. There are many important points. But there is, there is one important point that I'd like to discuss today, some of it, which is an essential factor in our progress, and that is association. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was asked, what is the character of it, what is the characteristic of Vaishnava? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, in reply, Ashat Changa Tyag e Vaishnava Acha. Vaishnava's behavior, Vaishnava is recognized by his characteristic of giving up bad association. And he further clarified, Shri Shangi Ega Ashadhu Krishna Bhakta. There are two kinds of non-devotees, or asatsana, asatsana, bad association. One is called stri sangi, that means someone who is interested in associating with, with women for sense enjoyment. And the other is called a non-devotee, krishna abhakta. This means that there may be spiritualists who have given up the association of women for the sake of sense gratification. But at the same time they are not devotees, they are mayavadis. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warned to give up bad association yeah. and to keep good association. And, and this is another answer to a how-to question. How can we become sincere? Associate with those who are sincere. How can we control our mind and senses? Associate with those who are controlling their minds and senses. How can we quickly make advancement? Associate with those who are advanced. Association is very powerful. Srila Prabhupada often gave the example that if we associate with thieves, then in a short time we'll also most likely become thieves. 
if we associate with drunkards, we'll soon become drunkards. And that is the power of association. Imagine if you're going with a group of drunkards. They're all drinking all the time. And it seems like the most normal thing for them, that they should, everyone should drink. If you don't drink, you are left out. You're unusual. And they'll say, yeah, hey, come on, take a drink, take a drink. They'll be encouraging you. And you'll seem, you'll seem strange if you don't. And you see that they're all drinking. So you think, well, it's quite normal. They're all drinking, so I guess I should too. So in the same way, if you associate with devotees, they're all chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So they're all saying, why are you chanting Hare Krishna? So they're all chanting Hare Krishna, and after some time you think, yes, I should also chant Hare Krishna. So even within the society of devotees, we should try to seek out the association based on more events. Association with devotees means more than simply living with them. But we should associate with them on the platform of Krishna consciousness. I don't know exactly what goes in, on in Russia, but I've seen in other countries that sometimes those who are devotees, they come together and they talk all nonsense. They may discuss some sports, or tell some mundane jokes, and they just really waste their time. And they associate with each other, even though they chant Hare Krishna, they tend to associate with, it, with each other on a mundane platform. And I don't know why, how they have so much time. I don't know how they have so much time for talking all this nonsense. Actually, that's another secret of devotional service, is to keep always busily engaged in Krishna service. But really, if we want to take advantage of the association of devotees, then we should interact with each other as devotees. That means to glorify Krishna, or to discuss topics of devotional advancement, or to discuss something in relation with our preaching program. Well, don't waste time. Don't waste our lives. Try to find more advanced association. Now, of course, many of us, we have the association that we have. We can't do much. We can't change them. If you're living in a certain town or a certain temple and there's only five devotees there, those are devotees you have to associate with. Once one devotee was living in Vrindavan, in those days, that was before our temple was constructed there. And he told Prabhupada, uh, I want to live. All the devotees here, they only talk nonsense. There's no strong association. So Prabhupada said, well, you become a strong association. They're all talking nonsense. They're all talking nonsense means you don't have to talk nonsense. You talk about Krishna, and maybe they'll change. So that ultimately we have to associate on the spiritual platform. Even if apparently the devotees around us are not so strong. Actually anyone who has come to Krishna consciousness is glorious. We shouldn't also look down on the devotees and say, ah, it's just not nonsense. Maybe they are a little bit nonsense. They become influenced by the material energy. But the fact that they have come to Krishna Conscious means they are very special people. So it's, it's best to try and bring out the best in others rather than condemning them. Now as far as good association is concerned, we all have got good association. We've all got Prabhupada's books. We all have the holy name of Krishna. Many years ago, I was um, preaching in Bangladesh, and we had very little association. So, once at a meeting of the regional leaders in Calcutta, I brought up this question. That it's very, some of us are, these are pioneering days, we have very few devotees, and uh, you know, sometimes we have to spend months with just one or two devotees. And it's very difficult to get the kind of inspiration that you get from associating with many devotees, so what should we do? So the answer was given by Anidesh Shivapu, Ratnas Brahmachari. That's Brahmachari. 
So he said he was in the same position in Hong Kong for a long time. But there were only two devotees. So every morning they had a really fired up morning program. Anida Shivapu would offer the arti. And the other devotee would do the kirtan. Jumping and dancing and singing loudly. Then the next morning, he with the other devotee would offer the arti. And the Shivapu would be leading the kirtan, jumping and Running around and around the room, singing loudly. So we always have the association of the Holy Name. And Prophet books. Actually, that's another experience of mine. In those early days, different places, Bangladesh, Thailand, Burma, uh, like for several years there was hardly, most of the time I had the enemy association, other than Prophet books. So in that situation, took uh, very, very strongly took advantage of the association given by Shri Prabhupada in his books. So many of us, I know in Russia, there are many devotees living in towns where there are just two or three devotees, or they may be living in some village. They may be living at home where their association is their husband or wife who is still eating meat and watching TV. So we, we always have the holy name in Prophet's books, take advantage of that. And take advantage of these festivals. These festivals are a great opportunity to associate with the devotees. It gives, us a, gives all the devotees a tremendous boost, doesn't it? Despite all the physical austerities, it's so inspiring to come together with so many devotees. So try to come to these festivals. We don't know if there will be a festival exactly like this next year because the fate of this property is undecided. But there are big festivals held in all the temples of Janmashtami, Gorkami, all these festivals. And so many others. So take advantage of these. At least try and attend them. If you can uh, help in the organization, that will give you so much service to do, that's also very blissful. These festivals are a great boost in our Christian consciousness. If you come to Mayapur festival, it will be a tremendous boost for your Christian consciousness. Please try to come, if, if at all possible. Who's visited Mayapur festival? Hands up! up, 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 up. So many of us are still waiting. I'm always encouraging devotees to go. And often devotees from the West, after they go, they tell me that we couldn't understand why our Guru Maharaj is pushing us so much to go to Mayapur. Before. Yeah. Because we had to collect for so many months, so much difficulty to get to Lakshmi. But after they go, they think, oh, this is the most wonderful experience. And then when they come back to the West, they immediately start collecting Lakshmi for next year. So please come home. Your home is not in Moscow. Your home is in Mayapur. It's Lord, Lord Chaitanya's home of Jagannath Mishra. Uh, but, uh, it's Lord Chaitanya's birthplace, the home of Jagannath Mishra. So Lord Chaitanya is inviting, inviting all the people of the world. Prabhupada has built Mayapur Chandradoy Mandir to glorify Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So come, chant, dance, and be transcendentally happy in the land of Mayapur. At least, at least once a year. Now, on the point of association, association is, it doesn't only mean physically associating with devotees. But there is uh, association on the mental and intellectual level also. It's only different levels. We associate with non-devotees not only by talking with them, but by associating with their ideas. We associate with materialistic people by watching TV. is a great addiction for some people. It seems like a very easy thing to do. Just turn it on and you get some, something interesting, some entertainment. 
It's almost like a hypnosis. You turn on the TV and you just can't stop looking. We should know that it's very, very detrimental to our spiritual adventure. Sometimes I've walked into the bodies' homes, they didn't know I'm coming. And they're sitting there, turning their rounds, watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice they're turning their rounds. But you can't really expect the same effect as if you concentrate properly. So watching TV, reading, army literature, you have to be very careful. Now many devotees, especially preachers, they see the newspaper or news magazines at least from time to time. I do also. It's useful when you're preaching to a group of people who are not very interested in Shastra if you, if you give some examples from current affairs. But we should know that our real reading subject is Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, not the newspaper. It's called Asat Shastra. It's not Shastra, it's Asa. It's wrong, improper. So that you may just look and see. Have a quick look through if there's anything for you. Otherwise, why waste your time? What is in the vision? What all the rascals are discussing. Some earthquake, some bomb, some president of some country said something or did something. That's not our. That's not going to take us back to. Similarly, we should be careful not to become absorbed in non-devotional literature. Now, there are many expert writers in the world, and often their ideas may seem to be very good. And so our devotees, sometimes they read books by management experts, and they think how we can improve management in this one. And they read books about psychology or human relations. We should be very, very careful and rigorous. Now it may be that such people, they have some good ideas. But their good ideas are inevitably mixed with illusions. Because they're in illusion. Their ultimate goal of life is to enjoy the senses. It's sometimes people say, but oh, this book is written by a person who believes in God, so it must be good. Just because someone professes a belief in God doesn't mean that he's uh, one of our gurus in Parampara. Or they say, but Prabhu, this person's a vegetarian, his book must be God. Hitler is also a vegetarian, which doesn't mean he was God. We should read books which are written by the Parampara Acharyas. So even if we read a book by someone who believes in God and it seems very good, even if they believe in God, Unless they're trained in the Vaishnava principles, still their ultimate aim is sense gratification. One, the books of one management guru have become very popular in our society in the last few years. I must admit, I didn't ever read any of his books. My spontaneous attraction for reading his books did not yet arise in my heart. But I flipped through one of his books once to see what what is this nectar that I'm missing out on. So, uh, in one of the chapters was the character of an ideal person, according to this management guru. So, one of the qualities of an ideal person, according to this new age guru, is he doesn't become anyone's disciple. Is this really the kind of guidance we want to take? Our whole idea is to become a disciple. And he is preaching, don't become anyone's disciple. At the same time, he's a management guru, and by reading his book, you become his disciple. It's just like this rascal writes books that uh, don't read any books, and it's written in the book. He's written a book, and in the book he says, don't read any book. Yeah. We should know that all the ideas, we need, everything we need, is in the Now you may say, well, you know, who's this rascal sitting up here saying that? He's also that. But, uh, that, of course, will continue. Writing books is a Vaishnava activity. Kirtan, glorifying Krishna. So books that continue, books that teach according to the principles of the Parampara, and glorify Krishna according to the principles of Parampara, they are wanted. We should be very careful. 
because to be quite frank, you see, even among the disciples of Prabhupada, some of the books that are written, not all of them are very conducive for our devotees to make advancement. Fortunately, and there are some books which I see devotees read them and they actually become confused. Fortunately, these books haven't been translated into Russian yet, but don't worry, I'm sure someone will in due course of time. Anyway, the point is we have to be very careful in our association. Especially books and literature is very powerful to influence our mind. So if you want to be absolutely safe, read Prabhupada's books and study those books which follow in the spirit of Srila Prabhupada. Now, another form of association we should be very careful about is association by food. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Vishoyer Anna Khaile Dushta Haiman. That if you eat food cooked by a non devotee, then your mind will become polluted. You have to be very careful about this. Especially devotees living in their homes. It, it's very easy just to buy some bread. It's not good for our spiritual advancement. Especially the grains cooked by non devotees. The, the consciousness of the non devotees goes into it. Once, Prabhupada was asked, more than once, Prabhupada was asked about this. Because our devotees are going on traveling, Sankitan, can they, can they just buy some bread? After all, it's vegetarian, we hope. <laughs> Prabhupada was saying, no. No way. He said, the, the, the devotees on Sankitan, let them cook, let them, let them distribute less books, but let them cook and cook. The food is cooked by devotees. Another suggestion Prabhupada gave is that the temples can send them prasad by air freight. Send them, you can send them air freight every two or three days. Send them prasad. He was so concerned that devotees not take food cooked by so to be a devotee really means a, a different way of life. Even uh, sometimes you may, you know, if you, if you really want to stick to this, uh, sometimes you may go without food if you, if you really want to follow these principles. But you, a real devotee, he'll even go without food for some time rather than eat food. Be caught by non devotees. In other types of bad association that sometimes we see our devotees are addicted to. There are other types of non-devotee association we see our devotees are sometimes addicted to karmi music, just like Jack Chandler just said, the famous band of demons is coming to Moscow, so yeah. the rolling stones. So if you think, wow, it sounds pretty good, maybe I should go and see them. I hope, I don't think any other devotees are. But they might remain addicted, you know, so they, you know, maybe sometimes I'll listen to some music, you know, after all it's quite good. Be careful. Better listen to Kirtan. So pure and nice. So soothing to the consciousness. Especially in the big cities, we hear all the time we hear so many horrible noises. Banging, crashing, traffic noises. So modern music, it's like that. It's banging, crashing, it's the sound of frustrated people. Kirtan is also sometimes banging and crashing. Right? Yeah, Drums, cartels. But that is Stop ecstatic control. mortification of Krishna. So let us become addicted to this sound of Kirtan. Really, we should understand very seriously that this karmic music is a very bad contamination. We should give it up. Another addiction we see sometimes devotees as it have this. Uh, they remain interested in karmi sports. <coughs> What's the most popular sport in Russia? Probably football in most countries. Is it? Yes, more so. so. Football in Russia there's ice hockey, right? You can say so, an ice hockey team. There's so many different sports, so many different ways to waste your life. It's <coughs> on. There's no, there's no real need to elaborate on this. It's, it's clear, it's just nonsense. Chasing around after a ball. Because all the ladies appreciate this. For them. <laughs> now, one other, kind of, one other kind of association we have to give up. 
talk about so many bad external influences. So we should, we should also give up the association of our nonsense mind. We have so many nonsense thoughts in our minds. I don't think I have to elaborate. Everyone is quite familiar with this. So many nonsense ideas in our head. So that we should also give up. All the ridiculous ideas for sense gratification. Thinking about ridiculous things we did in the past. And contemplating ridiculous things that we might like to do in the future. Get off this now. Chang Hare Krishna. Think about Krishna. Chang Hare Krishna and Dima. There are many, many things to say. We, could, we should have this seminar every day. We should always discuss... We should always discuss topics of advancement in Krishna consciousness. There are many, many points. You can summarize it as Prabhupada did by saying Chant Hare Krishna and Dima. So that's Srila Prabhupada's order. That's the instruction of our Guru. Everyone has to follow Guru's instructions. Uh, our Guru has told us to be happy. So in our movement, not being happy is against the rules. So everyone should be happy. You can't be happy by sense verification. So be happy by chanting Hare Krishna, dancing Kirtan. There's one good secret of spiritual advancement. Dancing Kirtan for Krishna's pleasure. And we will, by doing that, we will all be purified. One, one kirtan with dancing is worth millions of years of austerities of the yoga. Out of Vayuta. Out of Vayuta. Out of Vayuta 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 means don't do anything for your own sense gratification, do everything for Krishna. Live in the world and serve Krishna. If you have millions of rubles, use them for Krishna. If you only have hundreds of rubles, use them for Krishna. If you only have ten rubles, use it for Krishna. If you only have ten kopecks, use it for Krishna. And if you don't have ten topics, chant Hare Krishna anyway. Somehow all the living is going to be chant Hare Krishna. Let's take this one. Do you want to do morning exercises? Well, uh, you can dance in Kirtan. That's a good exercise. <laughs> You can also walk while chanting Japa. If you have any specific health problem, you may need to do some kind of like this. If it's required for our physical health, we may need to do Just, just like anything else, we should not do anything material more than we need to. We're not going to enter the Olympics. We don't have to be super fit like a racehorse. We just have to keep we just have to keep fit enough to start Krishna on its own. See even sometimes these super fit people who are always doing exercises, they they're often the people who sprain their muscles through over exercise. And the people who have the worst arthritis in old age are who? The sportsmen, those who are sportsmen in their youth, because they over exercise their bodies. So anything is alright in moderation. If you feel it necessary to do some exercise well, at least you can listen to some cassette or some lecture like that when you're doing it. Although for most people, if you dance a little in Kirtan and you, you walk around here and there while doing your service, for most people, that may be enough exercise. In traditional societies, there were people who didn't do exercises. But just by walking here and there, you see, they didn't have cars. Just by walking here and there, by sweeping the house, by doing all, by washing the clothes, and they'd automatically use them. There are no taps, so they would fetch water, so all these things get them done. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yes. No. No. But uh, some devotees have also produced some kind of heavy rock music and have explained that this is meant to attract those on the gross sensual platform. So our devotees are not supposed to be on the gross sensual platform. Krishna consciousness is meant for purification of our senses. So if we maintain a taste for this kind of gross sound, how can we enter the spiritual world where everything is refined and cultured? That kind of thing might be all right for someone who's just coming. For devotees, we should cultivate listening to the sounds of the spiritual world. Where everything is very tasteful. To be merciful towards oneself, chant Hare Krishna. No, anyone can chant Hare Krishna. That Hare Krishna mantra which is distributed 
a respond to devotee. So it's also coming in the front row. So we actually see that if our respond to devotees come and preach to others to chant Hare Krishna, that if others do start chanting Hare Krishna, they get benefit. But the full benefit will come when someone takes up the chanting very seriously, takes up the process of sadhana bhakti very seriously, becomes initiated. But our attitude or our consciousness affects everything that we've been discussing during the summer. Krishna consciousness means to be conscious of Krishna. Krishna says in the Gita that in all activities be conscious of me. So by taking Krishna prasad we are benefited. But if we take Krishna prasad, remembering that this is Krishna's mercy on me, then we'll get more benefit. How can you, how can you compare book by some a person who's in Maya with Bhagavad Gita? And there may be some points in there which have some value, but to say it's as good as Gita is ridiculous. Why don't we start some? In the evening, we can have classes. We start having classes on. You know, let's open some book by some management who. Actually, they started doing this at some time. How can you say it's the same as Gita? Some management techniques aren't going to purify your consciousness and help you remember Krishna. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada said that you only should attend Mount Avanti. That's what Prabhupada said. You make no decision. Yeah, and that, that's a good question. We, had, we also study at university and do some karma. We have to be very, very careful. You should know very clearly that when you study at university, that is only on the mental platform. And that even though the people who are writing these books they think that they are right, they don't have the absolute truth as Krishna has. In India at the present time, in the, in the colleges, there are many students and professors also who are chanting the rounds and becoming devotees of Krishna. When they start reading Prabhupada's books, they very quickly come to the understanding that this knowledge is in a completely different category to that much they're being taught at university. And that in fact what they're studying at university is all nonsense. So they go, many times they say, I don't want to study this, I want to join the temple, it's all nonsense, why should I waste my time? So anyway, um, mostly they go on with their studies as a matter of social duty. Mm -hmm. But they're not enamored by that knowledge. They know that it's nonsense. But if they to get it, if they're gonna later on get married and get a job, they require to have this piece of paper called the university degree. Or even if they're going to, even if they're going to join the temple as a preacher, unless they get that, people will say, "Oh, you just dropped out. It's just an excuse to drop out of university." But if they get a degree and then they preach, then people will tend to respect them more. Now, some devotees. Is another the other side of the story is some in the Western countries I've seen that some devotees are telling them that, oh that those who don't have degrees, now you all have to go to university and get degrees, then people will respect you when you preach. So that's also not necessary that all other devotees get degree. If you don't have a degree and you don't why go to the trouble of getting one? You have the highest knowledge which is Bhagavad Gita. Why do you want to spend three, four years cluttering your head with all nonsense? You see the point? If you're already doing it, it's fine. Or there may, be, there may be some cases where devotees get degrees for doing some specialized service, such as preaching to scholars. But it's not necessary that all our devotees get university degrees. If you need it, if you're a Grihastha and you need it to get a job, then it's something else. If you're a preacher, get, get a Bhakti Shastri degree from our devotees. In my own case, maybe I'm biased, I don't know. Oh. But it, 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 didn't, uh, it didn't ever inhibit my preaching. Often people ask me, which university did you go to? I tell I've been to so many universities. I've preached in so many universities. I don't have any problem to preach to professors and students because I study proper sports. But I have a formal 
education beyond the age of 17 years. So the point is that uh, this uh, mundane education, if, if, for living in this mundane world, it, it paid on its usage. And according to individual circumstances, some devotees may be studying like that to get some degree. But we shouldn't be enamored by that and think, well, this is, you know, this is as good as Srimad Bhagavatam. Another thing, sometimes I see devotees who do have degrees, they, see, they, they don't say it, but they, they're thinking, you know, all these other devotees, they're not as educated as me. And better. That's another one. Too. Real knowledge means to understand. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. I am his eternal son. This, uh, this, con- this false ego that I am a great scholar or something. Even to be a scholar of Prophet's books, if you're reading like that and you're thinking, well, I know so much, I'm so learned. That's also an, that's also another disqualification for devotional service. <laughs> knowledge gives humility. A really learned person understands. By his learning, he understands I'm completely insignificant. A person who is somewhat learned thinks I'm very vastly learned. But the really great scholars of this world, they realize how little I actually know. In his time, Isaac Newton was considered the greatest learned person. But he said, I feel as if I'm walking on a great beach, the great beach of knowledge, and I've picked up a few grains of sin. So it's a great, actually, preaching among intellectual circles, it's very important. Because these people are misguided in the world but they, with their wrong ideas. So our movement is not anti intellectual. Rather, we are the devotees, they have the best knowledge and should be the best intellectual. So, for preaching among the intellectual classes, some knowledge of different disciplines may be required. And a devotee who is very expert can, under, can understand the concepts propounded by materialistic intellectuals and connect with mundane intellectuals on their wavelength and communicate Krishna conscious ideas like that. But to do that they have to be very convinced that Krishna conscious is the absolute truth. And although mundane knowledge may appear to be very wonderful in the, in the eyes of those who do not have knowledge of Krishna consciousness, you cannot slightly come near to or compare with the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam. And in the name of scholarship, we shouldn't give up our basic sadhana of chanting the holy names, associating with devotees, dancing in Kirtan. <coughs> All right, I don't have any time for any questions. Maybe next year. Hare Krishna, thank you for your patience and listening. Thank you. 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 Thank you.